have you ever been in front of an audience and just felt that you weren't getting through, you weren't connecting? And as you're in front of that audience, you try to connect more and more, and it just isn't working. All the things that you thought would work, you thought it would make happen, it just doesn't seem to be happening. People seem to be getting further and further away the more you're talking. Ever had that happen? If you have, then you know the frustration. Frustration is you see that disconnection occur. But it doesn't need to be that way if you use the three R's. Now, you might be thinking, Tim, don't you mean the four R's, right? No. The four R's are fine, but they won't help you become a better speaker. No, I mean the three R's. The three R's are developing and building and growing your speaking abilities. And the first R is something that's so important right at the beginning. If you've ever given a talk and thought right at the beginning you just didn't really make that connection, it's because that first R was missing. Not the first star is that challenge of really getting across. Once you understand that first star, hey, things start to come together. You start to make sense. You start to work. And because they start to work, it's a lot easier up there. And that's what just the first star. The first star is such incredible power, but first star alone can't do it. You need the second R. Once you have the second R, then that initial connection is deepened. The second R, that initial connection is deepened and strengthened and built. People feel that, yeah, you get it. You understand. You see in their eyes as you look out in the audience that they're they're understanding, they're nodding their heads. They get what you're talking about. They know how it works. And you know how it works. So that works really well. It's that all important second R. The third R is where everything comes together. First R and the second R set things up, and the third R, everything really comes together and starts to become a whole. That connection that you felt is deep and strengthened, reinforced with the third R. Using the third R is really what your whole talk is building towards. It's the result of all of these different things. Now, result isn't one of the three R's, but you'll have good results when you use the three R's. So today you'll learn about the three R's. Find out how the three R's are set up. Why it's so important to go in order the first, the second, the third. You'll know better how to get that deep connection with your audience using those three R's. And you'll find out how this simple method you can create talks that engage and pull and get people interested, get people involved, get people thinking. That's the power of the three R's. You can learn all of this today. The step you through it. In the first R, the very beginning, the things that sets everything up. And then the second R. Things are reinforced and deepened. The third R, where you get the result of the three R system. 
It all begins with that first R. And the first step is the first R. The first R is so powerful because it begins this connection with the audience. It's the basis for this conversation because there is a conversation going on with the audience. And if you don't have the first star, that conversation can't even begin. Maybe you've noticed that. You're speaking. You start out and you don't make that initial connection. You don't get that deep connection you really want. You don't get that sense that, that you're really in the right place with the audience. And that happens if you don't have that first star. It is so important right at the very beginning. When you do have the first star, you'll notice that you get that connection. You get that feeling that people understand what's going on. This first star helps them get more faith in you, more belief in you, more trust in what you're saying. It's right from the beginning. You reassure them with this first star that, that you understand, that you get it. And that's the power. That's the power of the first star that you, you get it from the beginning. Once you understand that first star, then you make that initial connection. That initial connection will lead to further connections as you go through the rest of the R's. But it begins with that first star. And the first star is to recognize. Recognize. And recognize is all about understanding the problem. Whatever you're talking about up there, there has to be some type of problem, some sort of situation, something that needs to be solved or developed. It has to be something for people to do. In order to help people understand what they should do, it's important to recognize what that problem is right from the very beginning. If you're going to talk about things, just make it clear that you recognize it. If you're talking about unemployment, for example. You could say, unemployment is very high. You recognize. You recognize that there's a problem with unemployment. You recognize what that, what that problem is. And when you recognize things, you can get the audience to connect in. Maybe a little nodding their heads. The audience starts thinking, yeah. That's right. Unemployment is high. They start nodding their heads, and that nodding their heads is their way of pulling them in. See, if people are nodding and agreeing to your statements up front, they're much more likely to agree, nod and agree with any conclusions you have later on. It's that recognition of the problem. It's recognizing the problem. Do they get it? So if somebody is unemployed, and they think, you understand. You understand where I'm coming from. Okay, I'm going to pay attention. And even if somebody isn't unemployed, most likely they know somebody who's unemployed. So again, it's that connection by recognizing. Power that first star of recognizing. Now, some people just stop there. They just recognize and that's it. And that's kind of what their speech is. Well, unemployment is bad. And unemployment is bad. It's kind of informing people. But it doesn't go far, far enough. And talk a little bit more about how to go further in the second R and the third R. But for right now, for right at the beginning, recognizing the problem. Because that shows you got a point. You're up there, you've got a definite point, you understand what the problem is. You get it. And if your audience knows you get it right from the beginning, it reassures your audience. Relax, sit back a little bit and say, okay, you understand. You know where I'm coming from. That recognize in the beginning makes an all-important connection with the audience right from the beginning. And it's the first step. The first R 
is to recognize. The second R is something, if you don't have the second R, then you really don't deepen that connection. First step, of course, is recognizing, but it's that second R, that second step, that really deepens that connection with your audience. It's that second thing that's so powerful because it connects really deeply. Recognizing gets you only so far. Great, you recognize the problem, but where do you go from there? That's what the second R is all about. Second R, the second step will take you in deeper, take you in stronger with your audience. And it's very simple. Once you start using the second R, then you get that deep audience connection you've always wanted. You notice your audience starts to respond to you. You look out in your audience and you see that connection starting to happen and you think, this is going somewhere. This is a good gig. You start to enjoy being up there on stage more. People see you as knowing what the heck you're talking about. And you don't waste time putting together your performances up there. So that second art, everything kind of comes together as a whole. There's still a third art. But the second R will get you pretty far down the road to connecting with that audience. And the second R is to remember. Remember. And all that means is once you recognize something, great, okay, you recognize there's a problem. Now, see if you can get the audience to remember, to, to recall, to bring back into them that sense of what the situation is. It's about you remembering and helping others to remember what's really going on. Now, as you remember, in this case, said that unemployment is very high. Right now, unemployment is very high. That was the recognized step. Great. But then, remember things. Tell some sort of a story. It helps people to remember things. Say something like, yesterday I talked to Bob, who's been unemployed for three years. Bob said to me, Tim, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've been unemployed for three years. Money's starting to run out. I'm not getting, things aren't getting any better. I'm getting closer to having some jobs, but I need just a little bit more time. Tim, I need just a little bit more help to get me through this difficult passage, get me through this difficult part. That's remembering. Get your audience to remember and connect with that situation. So your audience thinks, yeah, Bob's having it tough. And then your audience thinks, I'm having it tough. Yeah, I just need a little bit more time, a little bit more help. I need to be able to get something happening here. When you remember get the audience into that world. You get them in the world. They're now part of the world. They're now part of thinking in that situation. They're now thinking the way you want them to think and about the things you want them to think about. Remembering step, get them deeply, deeply in there so they're finally left looking for that, that third R. Remembering step gets, deepens that connection. You recognize first, and then you remember. Remember what's going on. Just a little story tells just a little bit. A story that kind of hints at things. Some way you get the audience to remember, to recall, to get in their mind what you're really talking about. To make it real for them. The remember step makes it real for your audience brings the whole situation, just flashes right in front of their mind as something really they have to deal with. And that's what it's all about, to help the audience to remember. Here we are. 
everything's been building up to this moment. The moment of the third R. If you don't have the third R, this is where everything falls apart. And most speakers leave out that third R. They understand how to recognize. Okay, there's a problem. And remember, get the audience going. And then they leave out the third R. And everything falls apart. All that connection you've been so careful to try to build with your audience, it just all falls apart right there. Because that third R isn't there. It's the third step, it's the final step, it's the most important thing. It's the thing that seals the deal. Make sure that everything comes together. With the third R, hey, it's great. You get that connection with your audience all of a sudden. You start to enjoy being in front of your audience because everything starts working out. You start to have a sense that you're in charge of the situation with that third R. Everything comes together, you're in charge of the situation, you know what's happening. People look to you for solutions. The third R is so very important because it makes everything come together and everything you've been saying so far and recognizing and remembering leads directly to that third R. With the third R, everything comes together. And the third R is to respond. Respond. It's all about coming up with a response. If you go out there and you say, okay, I recognize there's a problem. And I'm going to help you remember how bad everything is. But you have no response. It's just no good. Most speakers do that. They bring up all sorts of problems and talk about, oh, things are really bad, but they don't have any solutions. They don't have any response. And there's really no point. If you're just going to bring up all sorts of problems and you don't have any solutions for them, why should anybody listen to you? Anybody listen to people complain all day? It's all about that response. Make sure that response is there. Make sure that response works. Because people want answers. And as a speaker, your job is to provide them with those answers. For instance, you talk about, okay, unemployment's very high. That was the example I'm talking about. Then, okay, this guy is having a problem. Unemployment, doesn't know what to do. So the answer is extending money for unemployment. Extending unemployment insurance. Make it possible so those people, like a guy who are struggling to get along and need just a little more time, have the extra time they need. So that's a response. Extend unemployment. Extend unemployment insurance just a little bit longer so those people who are struggling have the help they need to help them get that next job. That's the response. Everything builds up and helps reinforce that response. It's all about the response. Making sure there's some sort of response you give to all the problems, all the things that are coming up. So you stir all this stuff up and you really get people saying, yeah, okay, and then you don't provide anything, it's no good. Things fall apart. You get everybody all stirred up and then you provide something, that's good. And that's very good. That's that response. Everything builds to this third R. Everything builds to this response. All about getting people to go along with your response. In order for that to happen, you have to have a response. So when you stir up people and get them going, make sure you have a response. Alright, let's wrap things up now. 
and just see all the things you've learned today about the three R's. And the importance of using the three R's to get that deep, strong connection with your audience. First R is to recognize. Recognize is all about recognizing that there's some sort of a problem. And if there isn't a problem, then there's no point. There's no point even bothering getting up there and talking if there isn't a problem. So you have to recognize what that problem is. And it has to be a problem your audience is going to connect with. So you talk about the problem, you recognize the problem the audience recognizes. Yeah, that's a problem. The goal you want is you want your whole audience thinking, hey, they're right. That person up on stage is right. There's a problem here. And that will lead to thoughts of, hey, this is a big problem and something needs to be done. Haven't yet quite got over to your solution yet, but at least they recognize, okay, there's a problem, something needs to be done. So you get them ready, receptive. The second R is to remember. Help them remember what that problem is. That's all about telling a story that really gets people going. Some story that really illustrates that problem and shows that problem off. If you're talking about unemployment, tell a story about somebody who's been really unemployed, out of luck, out of work, three years, four years. You just a little bit more time. A little bit more time, just stretched out a little bit more time that can make it work. All a story that really gets people involved, gets them pulled in, helps them remember that situation. Not only will help you remember, help your audience remember the problem, it'll help them remember times they had the same problem. And they'll start thinking back, say, yeah, I remember going through that. I remember going through it yesterday, or I remember going through it years ago, or whatever it is. It'll help them connect in deeply with that problem you're talking about. That remembering process by using stories, by using things that bring everything into their mind, they remember stuff. As they remember stuff going on, they start to connect and say, okay, this is something really relevant to me. Everybody should be aware of that. Okay, I'm ready. And then comes the third R. Respond. This is the time you tell people how to respond. You make it clear, okay, a lot of things you could do, but this is the thing that's going to work. Respond this way, and things will be good. Respond this way, everything's going to work out, everything's going to connect together, it's going to all work out. And because you've got your audience going with, from the beginning, with recognizing the problem and helping them remember things, when you get to respond, they're ready to go. They're all ready to say, they're saying, let's march. Let's go out there and get something done. And that happens because we've all been stirred up with all this other stuff, but respond is the key thing. Make sure you've got some type of thing you want them to do. You want them to respond in a certain way. Now, it takes some work to go through this process of recognizing, remembering, and responding. Something you need to build into your speeches, and you do that because it'll help you connect in deeper and stronger. If you don't do that, well, you don't get that deep, strong response that you're looking to get from your audience. You don't get that commitment from your audience and your ideas. You know, the audience doesn't understand your ideas as much. They just don't get what you're talking about. Nothing seems to come together. If you do have that, recognize Remember, respond, then you get that commitment, you get that deep sense of, okay, this is what needs to be done. It's what we need to work on. It's what needs to happen. You get a sense that you're doing the right thing, and your audience believes you're doing the right thing. 
And as your audience gets more involved and more committed to what you're talking about, so you get the same sort of feeling. Recognize, remember, respond. Use that and you'll be looking good up there. People see you on stage and you look pretty darn sharp. You won't waste the audience's time. You just come down with it. This is what, it's where we are, what needs to be done, background. It'll be very clear for the audience, very clear for you when you're laying out your own speech. It's a step-by-step -step process. Each step getting them different. First, recognize, then remember, and then respond. By the time you get to respond level, you have deep commitment for your audience. And when you get that deep commitment, and you look at it, all those people out there, and you see they're committed to this as you are committed to this, that's just a wonderful feeling. So you want to get that deep commitment to your audience, recognize, remember, respond.